Hi, brothers and sisters. So last night I had several um, comforting dreams and words that kind of gave me guidance in my personal life. Praise God. He's the wonderful counselor. And so when I was trying to sort through what was supposed to be shared on the video today, I heard the Lord say, think Isaiah, he's coming to get you. And I had both a sense of he's coming to get his children and he's coming to get his enemies, both. Um, and so Isaiah actually is a great book to show both sides of that coin. And so I throw, scrolled through several chapters and I kept coming back to Isaiah 66. And so we'll start there. And um, just reading through some commentaries, it can be referring sometimes to history. Um, we know there's been a first and a second temple and the third temple is in the planning processes and so um, this can be both historical and prophecy um, but Isaiah 66 starts off like this thus says the Lord and I will there's like two dreams or words that I will incorporate um, in with reading the scripture as well but um, verse 66 chapter 66 verse 1 starts off with thus says the Lord heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool where is the house that you will build me and where is the place of my rest for all these things my hand has made and all those things exist says the Lord and I did hear him say during the night the cattle on a thousand hills are mine the entire earth is already um, you know God's footstool and heaven his dwelling place and God does not need a temple made by human hands and it goes on to say we'll jump down for a minute in verse 3 he who kills a bull is as if he slays a man he who sacrifices a lamb as if he breaks a dog's neck and it goes on to list a couple more um, acts of religious ceremonies and that's not what God is looking for he doesn't need sacrifices he is the final blood sacrifice the payment for our sins so those sacrifices in fact are an abomination to the Lord so what is the Lord looking for we see right in the middle there but on this one will I look, on him who is poor and of a contrite spirit, and who trembles at my word. So I looked up um, the Hebrew for poor and contrite spirit, and these are the synonyms, the word that came, the words that come directly from those Hebrew words, um, a person who is depressed in mind or circumstances, someone who is afflicted, humble, meek, troubled, miserable, dejected, sad and depressed, downcast, downhearted, dispirited, disappointed, disheartened, discouraged, demoralized, crushed, heartbroken, and broken hearted. And then it adds, and who trembles at my word. That is someone who is obedient to God's word. When God speaks, they hear and obey. They have the fear or the reverence of the Lord. Now, why would this be someone on whom God looks? It's because that is the heart. Such a heart is a living temple for God. He dwells there. So rather than in a building made by human hands, he dwells in hearts that are humble, who have gone through a lot, but yet who have remained faithful to his word to obey him. And their hearts are ready for him to fill and to dwell there. And 
then it goes on to speak to those people again in verse 5. Hear the word of the Lord, you who tremble at his word. Your brethren who hated you, who casted you out for my name's sake. And he goes on to say several things. But the conclusion is, so I will comfort you and you shall be comforted in Jerusalem. The people who need the comfort are the ones who are going to be comforted by the Lord. And um, it's in relation to Jerusalem, but it also extends to God's children. He will deliver us. We will rejoice with Jerusalem. We will be glad. We will be consoled. We will be delighted. Um, we will experience the abundance of the abundance of the glory of the Lord and have his peace. So you can see how a heart ready for him um, that isn't satisfied and made happy by the things of this world who wants and longs for the Lord Jesus Christ and who trembles at his word and listens and obeys. Such a heart is where the Lord dwells and he turns it around um, and brings comfort and peace and hope and joy. On the other side of the coin, God says he's coming to get you, so he's coming to comfort his children. But um, as we read in verse 14 and forward, the hand of the Lord shall be known to his servants, the comfort, the joy, the peace, the love, the consolation, and his indignation to his enemies. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. And I mentioned it in a comment on one of my videos yesterday, but I didn't describe it in the video that I did see a whirlwind and it had like in it a train, which we don't really have chariots today. So it was represented by the, the cabs of a train coming in a whirlwind. And it was in a countdown like six, five, four, three, two, one. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by day and by his sword, the Lord shall judge all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. The Lord says, for I know their works and their thoughts it shall be that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. So again, God is going back to those who will be marked, sealed by his ownership, by his spirit, by the grace of Jesus Christ. And I will set a sign among them, and those among them who escape, I will send to the nations, to the coastlands afar off, who have not heard my fame nor seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. Then they shall bring all your brethren for an offering to the Lord out of all nations to my holy mountain Jerusalem, says the Lord, as the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel by grace through faith. We are clean by the blood of Jesus. We are clean vessels and we will be brought into the house of the Lord. And I will take some of them for priests and Levites, says the Lord. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall be your descendants and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. And they shall go forth and look upon the corpses of the men who have transgressed against me, who did not receive the cleansing forgiveness of the blood of Jesus Christ, who did not open their ears and their hearts to him, but remained um, dead and closed ears and blind within their rituals. For their worm does not die and their fire is not quenched. They shall be an abhorrence to all flesh. So again, both sides of the coin, eternal joy, eternal worship, eternal peace and comfort, or eternal judgment. So think Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 66 for further study. He's coming to get us all. In Jesus' name we praise you and thank you, Father, for your word. Amen.